All righty. Welcome, everyone, to the September 2024 meeting of the Central West Board of Directors. We actually have a full house on board members. Um, we do have one open slot as Josh Boyer is now acting as the Red Hat liaison as we have sadly lost Bex. So welcome, everyone. Previous meeting minutes, if anyone needs them, is in the agenda. Brendan, do you want to go ahead and give your quick update? Yeah, yeah. My update is I don't entirely have an update yet. Uh, it's only been three weeks, I think, since the last meeting. I thought I had four weeks. So uh, for, for context for everybody, uh, last time we talked about the possibility of putting together a three-way uh, conversation, activity, meeting, podcast. Don't know what it is yet between CentOS, Fedora, and Rail Leadership. Uh, the conversation I'm having with a body, initial conversation with the full body of possible people is tomorrow, actually. So I should have some asynchronous updates before the next board meeting. Uh, nonetheless, in the private conversations I've had, because I've had a bunch of them, like no one's gonna go into tomorrow's call dry, uh, people are positive. And so this, is, this isn't this is like, a, are we gonna do this? It's a, what form should this take? Who should be involved? How do we make this like workable? Kind of thing. So the plan remains, uh, as we agreed before, that we will come back and uh, collaborate on what this thing is uh, together just as soon as we've got uh, internal buy-in. But I have no no concerns about that at all. So hopefully have a good update for you soon. All right. And just some clarity on why there was only three weeks. We had moved last month's meeting because of travel to Flock and then DevConf US, which is why there was one week shorter between our meetings. Um, does anyone have any questions, concerns for Brendan? All righty. Um, we have no new issues. The main agenda item that I had was to talk about the SIG Council. And being that we have an issue on that, we will drop down to the issues on hold for number 126, Charter of the SIG Council. Brian, are you back? Yes, you are. Yeah, I'm here. Yep. So uh, I can speak to this one. Um, the the item that's been on hold for a while was actually getting this um, written up and proposed as a merge request to the website as part of the governance section. I actually started on that this week, and I've gotten most of the way through the actual governance part. The, the problem is... Um, a lot of the SIG governance page still actually points to the old wiki, uh, which we can't really update. And so this this change that uh, you're going to see from me uh, for approval by the rest of the board is probably going to be a, a little bit bigger than you expect it to be uh, because I'm copying some of that information over so we can curate it and stuff. Um, there's also one. Uh, go ahead, Sean. Mike, Mike. You're muted. Thank you. I don't want to put any stop energy on this. I just, uh, in the doc day, I think we discussed moving a lot of that uh, governance information over to a governance doc and keeping the stuff on the website pretty sparse. But I think if you do what you're doing, then we can move that over. So I just- Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. It, I, don't, I don't want to put stop energy on. There's a there's a SIG governance page that's out there right now and it's, it's woefully out of date and uh, still you know, points at the wiki. And so I think doing that as part of this, this effort is something I can take on. And if you, if you want to move it in the future, feel free to, um, but, uh, the other, um, so that the other open question, and we're going to continue without this question being answered, but, um, Josh, this is maybe something with you and your liaison role that we, we can work together on. There was some, uh, since we're using this SIG council to provide some, uh, security response for secure boot and things like that. Uh, there was a question on if Red Hat product security wanted to be involved or at least monitor this group to see what's going on. I don't think we need to block on that necessarily just with the questions that we have, but um, this is something I'd ask you to you uh, to pay attention to as part of your uh, your role here, if, uh, if you don't mind. Okay, yep, thank you. All right, Davida. Um, I think we talked about this back in Brussels when we we're talking originally. I 
I suspect it might be easier to decouple the the secure boot and governance stuff from the Sig Council stuff in that, like, I think it's fine to have the secure boot thing be derived from the council or be a subset of the council, but I don't think we necessarily need them to match one by one. Uh, and I would caution against trying to make this like a like catch all for both scenarios because I fear that will overcomplicate things for both. Right. And and if you remember the the proposal, like that is one of the first things that the council will do. Uh, it's not something that we're writing into the governance, though. Perfect. Uh, that's that was where we landed out of that that discussion. The uh, the thing I'm talking about here um, is like if Red Hat product security wants to be involved with uh, with some of the security response, like how do we tell them where to look uh, for some of their updates and, and things like that? So uh, that's the only uh, the only crossover there. Cool. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Brendan, how do you see what you're working on interacting with the SIG Council, which just for reference for people who aren't aware and haven't looked at the ticket number that I called out earlier, um, basically it will be the chair, a co-chair, someone um, put forth by a SIG to attend these meetings. Um, also, we talked about Adam being in, in attendance, um, Brian being in attendance, the board could come and go if they're not already on the SIG, um, you know, just to make sure, you know, keep an eye on things, but not necessarily have a voting power, but I think knowledge is power. Um, so they would also report in quarterly um, back to the board, just like um, the SIGs themselves do. So um, that's just some background information on it at a very high level. Uh, there's Probably going to be a lot of overlap because both Brian and Adam are in that meeting tomorrow. I figured that. All right. So there will definitely be communication between the two groups. Excellent. Yeah. Just like I know, even if a board member doesn't show up, there are enough board member SIG chairs that there is board participation in the SIG council, just not directly. Um, does anyone else have anything? I actually thought we'd have more conversation on this topic. All righty, and being that you said the secure boot word, Brian, I had also picked number 67, trusting the SIGs by default from a CentOS project perspective, AKA secure boot. Yeah, so that's, uh, that is the first activity of the SIG council uh, is to, to make sure that we have the, the proper security response in place for that. Hang on, I'm typing because Thomas is working on the other one. Davida, while we're typing, go ahead. Um, besides the council stuff, uh, it's all the technical side for the securable stuff sorted out now. I, I think we're pretty close. We've, we've got all the pieces. Um, we just need to generate the certificates and uh, or regenerate them. I think they, um, we had a set of them at, at some point, but um, but yeah, it's the, the technical stuff is ready. Cool, thank you. And Brian, can you put all that in the ticket itself? Because I'm sure that you'll put more accurate information than we're putting in the notes. Any other questions about Secure Boot? Awesome, all right. Next, randomly selected number 114, create a new CentOS legacy mirror in Norway. And it's buddy number 113, CentOS Stream 9 mirror request. We do know that these mirrors are actually in service um, and available to people, but we had a legal issue in regard to them using the CentOS name. Um, one thing Johnny had suggested back then was that they could donate the donate the domain name and maybe the servers to us for use. Johnny, you can correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, the last note we had in these two tickets was we were gonna talk to legal and then um, also send a message to the folks in Norway. Do we have any updates on that? I think those are yours, Sean. 
I don't have updates on that, and that would be mine, wouldn't it? Um, okay, let me check my. Okay, I don't have any updates, so let's see. Got it. Okay. okay. Uh, so the the thing is to reach out. So we do not want the, anyone else to own the the uh, domain names. I believe was the decision, but that we'd be okay with us owning it and pointing at them. Um, Davida. Uh, yeah, I believe that is our layman understanding of this. I don't know that legal actually weighed in on any of these, but mm -hmm. like my understanding as a non lawyer person is that uh, because there, you, there are trademarks involved, uh, we have to be somewhat careful with letting third parties use the trademark or bad things can happen. Mm -hmm. Pat, did you have something to add? You put your hand up and down. Uh, yeah, uh, just the same thing David has said. Uh, as long as we own the SOA record, I think it's probably fairly safe, but not a lawyer and haven't done real DNS work in 15 years. Okay. Jeffra? This is related to the, the letter, the Chinese letter, right? Um, similar, okay. but not that. And I was going to mention that. Um, on one of the mailing lists, we got um, pinged from a registrar in China. Someone was trying to um, register CentOS.cn. So kind of the same situation. I don't know if that was responded to, Sean. Um, but similar situation of someone trying to um, register our domain name. It's unclear to me if that's a legitimate email that we received. I will say that I maintain a series of sites for my wife, and we get letters like that on a weekly basis. So it is very much a uh, domain name provider in China trying to promote business. It's my, at least that's been my experience. Okay, so we should probably send them the same email to the registrar that we are sending to Norway and then have it handy in a location where we can find it. Ah, uh, Benny says it's a scam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're saying you get them, but they're not. Okay, Josh. Um, I have a, I have a maybe a more tactical question. And I'm I'm actually glad that Brendan is on. Um, I understand the the rationale around trademark. That seems important to sort out. It also seems uh, separate from where the machines sit and who admins them. So while we sort out the trademark thing, can't we just ask them to change the URL or the domain name and we just enroll them as a tier one here that way? The reason I ask the question is because. Uh, Using Brendan's newfound outreach to the board, um, do you have staff that's ready to to go admin these servers? <laughs> it seems it seems like we're making an assumption that maybe we shouldn't be making, and we should ask questions. Brendan, do you have staff? I do not have staff for new servers that I'm aware of. Like I, I have not received a request to staff new servers at this time. Okay. So uh, just from like an order of operations perspective, we should get an opinion from legal. And Sean, if you're going to do that, that's fantastic. And then we should contact the mirror and ask them, wouldn't it just be simpler to change your domain name and then enroll that? And if there's a problem with this logic, somebody can certainly let me know. I, I don't. I. The last time I talked to legal about trademark issues, uh, they came back and they asked what we want to be the case. And then they would try to vet that rather than telling us what should be the case, if that makes sense. Um, so I guess if I'm talking to legal, I want to be clear on asking them, like, is this thing we're proposing good with you? That would be the best way to get an answer out of them that's useful. Okay, and if there is a requirement somewhere that says if we use the trademark in the domain name, we have to admin it because we're representing the project, that's fine. We should figure that part out. But if that's our proposal, then it's not just legal we have to talk to. It's mm -hmm. it's Brendan's team and, and some others, right? 
or that might be a good opportunity to have community members admin something that's not behind our firewall. Davida? So I think the options here are we take over the domain ownership, but this keeps being admin by the mirror owner. Uh, we give them some kind of like license for lack of better term to use the trademark. Um, or we say, no, this isn't okay, or we have to fully admin the thing. I don't think we necessarily, we as CentOS want to be in the business of operating individual mirrors around the planet. So that doesn't seem terribly viable. Um, I'm okay with either of the other options. I just don't know what the implications are. Well, cur I... currently right now, basically Fabian is managing any of the donated mirrors we have with Ansible scripts. Whether that's going to stay, how that works, whatever. But but it's been, you know, it's been maintained that way for years and years and years. Um, I, adding one extra server to the mix or one or two extra servers to the mix is not in any way intensive from a personnel time perspective. Yeah, I, I think just hearkening back to Josh's point, uh, it does re require the involvement of a larger body. And uh, Johnny, you might be right, it or it could be the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. So I'd want to have the conversation with the people who are affected by it before making a, a commitment. And I know we have talked about the trademark Previously, um, when we'd have requests, can I put your logo on our website and stuff? And we've always pointed them back to the trademarks page, which isn't the clearest or more, most detailed. So that may also be a good place for us to put some effort in um, and to clear that up and have legal view what we're suggesting. Um, and we can definitely go out and see what other open source projects are doing about their trademarks and compare it. For anyone shot and just put in that the trademark page definitely needs updates. Um, so maybe that's a joint time wise effort of us spending a little time um, trying to async on the trademark page a bit and have legal review that and also maybe talk to legal and see where they stand. I know they said, you know, they want us to bring something specific to them but maybe we can also ask questions that feel them out on how we should write the document and what we should do use case in the future. Davida? Yeah, if we have something specific to us legal, I would ask them if uh, like licensing the domain for lack of a better term is an option that is practical uh, or if we have to have full ownership of the domain to satisfy whatever requirements are there. Like I would like and clarity on that because that informs whatever else we want to do yeah from the one standpoint i mean you look at things like the reddit subreddit where we have no control over it um and it's out of our hands but yet it has our name on it so we want to protect ourselves from things like that but at the same time if we have clear documentation and i hope guidelines on what can be used where and when if we do have an issue going forward and, you know, where we can point to a, a good, a well-written trademark page and say, if this is in violation, please give us back control. That's an option as well. And that may be a better option long-term wise is just the ability to say, hey, you're violating our trademark. Um, these are the rules for using the trademark. You either get in line or give it back to us. And I think that's pretty common with trademarks. Do we have anything else on this subject? I'm looking through Tomas's notes and they look pretty good. All righty. 
It's the Sean Show. <clears throat> really already? Wow. Short meeting. I know. Um, uh, just two things on, on event stuff. Uh, we had talked about doing a virtual event, a half-day virtual event, um, mostly showcasing uh, SIG work, recent SIG work. Um, and I, I, I think I mentioned it in the last board meeting, or was it? I, I know I mentioned it talking to. Uh, um, I remember Neil had an opinion on it. I asked about trying to avoid the Fedora uh, release party, and I don't have a date on that yet. Um, and so, November fourth could be uh, colliding with a November. I think first, second. Uh, they would do the Friday, Saturday. We're looking at a Monday. Um, I think November 11th would solidly not collide with any of the dates they're considering. Is that good? Does it, I know, Amy, you said you had, uh, you might be. Yeah, I might be at KubeCon. Yeah, KubeCon. But if, right. I, but if I'm the only one there, it's really not an issue. Okay. I wouldn't hold up the whole entire community for me. Davda? Well, on the other hand, I don't know if we want to overlap with KubeCon because that could it's true. Take, take it out would, a lot of attention and stuff, and people potentially interested in both events. It would be a travel day for people who are going to day zero mm. or participating in the contributor summit, which I didn't think about. Um, so that may be a little cross overlapping. Um, if people aren't at the contributor summit and aren't participating in a day zero event, then it wouldn't overlap. Oh. Oh, is it really? Thank you, Jeffro. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, then yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, then someone who just traveled just pick, and was out on Labor Day. Why don't mm -hmm. I just go with the November fourth then? And if if Fedora ends up doing the Friday, Saturday before, then that's just how it ends up landing. So I'm sorry to anyone who gives talks at both, but yeah, yeah. that may be. I mean, if we end up doing that, we can work with Justin to do some kind of cross promo between the events and work. And I want to do a cross. He, I mean, he, he's asked me to uh, get some CentOS stuff into the release party as well anyway. So regardless yeah. of being on it. So the other option, if we're going back to that week is maybe on Thursday, because we're trying to avoid Friday because different time zones would be on the weekend already. Um, we definitely don't want to be on Tuesday that week. Uh, Thursday would be Halloween, which is not a not a you get the day off holiday, but it is a you know. A thing. Oh, I was thinking. Oh, I thought you meant Halloween. Thursday right before Fedora. Yeah. I, I was trying to give a break in between for the people who were talking at both. I see. I see. I mean, we could do Tuesday five if you want. If you don't want to do the fourth. Well, I'm saying don't do the election day. Oh crap! Sorry. Oh shit! <laughs> Fifth election day. Damn it. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think we actually moved the open in for board meeting to November fourth to uh, not conflict with KubeCon, and then we avoided the election day. So I think we moved to the fourth, but I wouldn't hold myself to that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mike. Whether no matter what anyone's opinion is, we don't want to prevent anybody from going and giving those opinions by voting. That's the reason to avoid it. Um, and we will not get into politics here except allowing people and not disrupting their day if should they choose to go vote. So yeah, that's where you get to Monday or Thursday that week, the yeah. previous week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other thing is that I, I did, I think I might have mentioned before, I reached out, um, gave the details for doing Connect before FOSDEM. FOSDEM still hasn't announced the dates, but we're assuming February 1st and 2nd. Um, the initial thing I got back, we have, um, those who don't know, in anything that Red Hat puts its hand on for um, organizing has to go through this like third party company and they make sure our contracts are negotiated well and all that stuff. So we got the details of them, and then their initial stuff from the hotels was that uh, the uh, nobody was available on our dates, and do we have alternate dates? Obviously not. 
Um, and then uh, I also reached out to uh, just my contacts at the hotels we've been at the last two years, just to see. Sometimes there's flexibility on something that the 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 middleman doesn't realize. Like you know, I might be able to move stuff. So um, anyway, it's in progress, and a, maybe one of the hotels actually did come back and say they have something, uh, but I haven't seen that yet, and I haven't seen the bid yet. But um, um, just to let everybody know that it is in progress. Uh, and apparently hotels are already booking up for events for the Thursday and Friday before FOSDEM, which doesn't bode well for all the rest of the FOSDEM fringe events as well. So um, uh, anyway, that's the status on that. And we'll get so, it as soon as we can. Do, do we have official dates already? For no, we're, we have an, we're, we're assuming that FOSDEM is February 1st and 2nd. Um, so being that Sean and I were and... being that Sean and I were talking, some of the options we also threw out to each other were after. Um, right, while we have there. everybody, let's get some feedback there. I think that would hurt attendance. Yeah, put a big question mark on that, Tomas. Davida. Yeah, I. I would not do it after. I think after a lot of people will be exhausted by them and just want to go home. It's a lot easier for people to add an extra travel day before the event. And like while they're like sorting out jet lag or getting in the area attending connect rather than planning for something afterwards, in my opinion. Yeah, and there was also the concern that the Fedora Council usually meets afterwards. So we would lose anyone who was participating in that as well. But we were just looking for ideas. Um, so hopefully we can keep our dates of the 30th and 31st with the dock day on Monday, because that's a small group. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there that, and this is good feedback. And this is why I kind of wanted to bring it up because we were just like throwing things at a dartboard, trying to come up with ideas. So, um, yeah, the third party got a response from one hotel. Sean reaching out personally got a response, but we're not sure if that's for both days. Yeah, I I actually got a, a bid with prices, which I have to like run through the third party. Uh, but did you get it for Friday too? But I didn't, I, they gave it to me for Thursday. And so I emailed them back and said, okay. this is, let me give you more specifics and verify that you actually have the space available. Um, and that was the the double tree where we were at in 2023. Um, and there's there's two different spaces within the double tree that could work for us. So I um, try to let that flexibility be known. Okay. Um, here's a thought that I just thought of. Would Wednesday, Thursday, with maybe dock day on Friday or everyone have a day off. I mean, that adds more to travel, but just a random thought. Because I like to throw that out to the group, random thoughts. Interesting. Because like, I think chaos is on Thursday and then there's something else on Friday that all of them are gonna go to. Um, I mean, I think we saw, you know, we saw this year with doing a two day thing for the, you know, that, um, that definitely there were people who showed up on Thursday, um, but it wasn't everyone. We know that we got more people on Friday uh, than on Thursday. And I expect it's just a, you know, a taper goes down. Like how many you get on Friday? How many you get on Thursday? How many you get on Wednesday? Um, yeah. I I agree because a lot of people are traveling on their own money. So I think three more days is a lot for a lot of people. So well, we, it would we be one more day because they would have Friday with potentially nothing to do, but they could go to another fringe event. Because, um, yeah, it was just a thought because I like to have random thoughts. That's, I mean, it's good to consider uh, ways we can be flexible. So, Davida? Yeah, I would say if you have trouble getting bids and it turns out uh, doing it, pushing a day earlier makes more locations available or makes locations viable, is probably worth at least looking at that comparing. Um, 
but yeah, in general, I think the current plan we have is better because it will be closer and it's the it would it would have more people coming probably. And I agree. I think the the further back we push it, the more people will risk losing. Um, but yeah, if it's just a day, it's not the end of the world. So if that opens up opportunities that we wouldn't otherwise have, it may be worth looking at. Okay. And it might be worth a poll to get people's feelings. Um, though it does seem that this group is totally against after. So it, it would be more of a, hey, is this an option if this is the only way we can hold Connect in Brussels for 2025? I don't think it's going to be the only option because like um, Sean mentioned, he did get a bid back and is talking to the Doubletree as well. Davida? Did we do a post event survey for the previous Connect? Because um, something I was thinking, like it's probably not useful to do it now, but for the next time we do one, it'd be useful to do what Flock did this time and like asking, asking folks about their feedback on what if we did this event by changing these parameters, what do you think about it? Um, just to get some data from actual attendees. Uh, yes, although maybe we didn't ask. Let me see. I have the survey. To put the... Yeah, I don't think we asked anything about other dates, but we asked them how they liked the event and so on and so forth. Yeah, it was uh, the, the questions that I asked were more around like the format. Like, did you like having the workshops in there? Would you want more talks, more hallway track? That was the. Uh, I didn't really ask about venue or timing. We didn't so. think we'd run into this. Actually, I did ask venue. I asked if people liked uh, the Radisson, the Double Tree, or the Marriott, or no preference better. Um, and my recollection on that one was that it was like it was completely split. Oh no, it was uh, uh, over fifty percent no preference, and then the rest of them were we're pretty evenly split. So people don't seem to care too much where we are. But I didn't ask when. I didn't ask if they'd want to yeah. move after or further before or anything like that. Because we didn't think we'd run into this. We thought we were going to be able to do it so early this year yeah. that we were not going to run into the problem. And we're doing it earlier this year and we have run into the problem. We actually would run into a worse problem. So, um, yeah, so that's just an update and some extra discussion on that. Does anyone else have any comments, concerns on anything Sean's covered? Uh, for what it's worth, the Fedora Flock videos are up. Thank you. I, I will schedule some social media posts on the, the CentOS ones. I, I should say some of them are up. My, um, I've been watching for my talks, and only one of them has gone up. Unless something changed in the last, let me double check. And the way Pat worded it, I thought it was like a very recent. Uh, this Davida? morning, my injured. hang on, Davida, Josh, and Pat. Um, Flock had some issues with the talks, and they had to re-upload a bunch because the audio was messed up. So that may be why if you've seen talks appear and disappear, but I think that's fixed now. So they should be uploading whatever's missing now or soon. All right, Josh, Pat, Sean. Yeah, I was just going to ask. Um, I had seen the talks that were in like the main rooms. They were giant videos that were like hours long. Did they go in and break them up? Because yep. like you could watch all the talks already. Okay. Pat. Uh. Yeah, it, was just, it happened. Mine appeared this morning. So. Okay, Sean. Uh, this reminded me to mention um, some of you know that I set up a uh, GitLab repository, the CentOS events repository. I'll drop the link in the chat. Um, one of the things we kind of lost with the decommissioning of the wiki is a place where people could just upload their slides for talks they've done. So uh, we now have this Git repository that we can use basically as a, a place to drop a slide. So if you have slides from talks you've done, um, feel free to hand them to me or do an MR or whatever. And I also have put markdown files in there with links to things that people can watch videos too. But.
All right, anything else? I have an AOB, but yeah, can I go ahead? Yes, go ahead. Go right. that because point. I got a question for two two community member across uh, one through IIC and one at uh, the work about uh, what is the rough planning for CentOS Stream 10? And it's true that we don't have anything up in terms of what is going on in terms of uh, a rough planning of everything. Do do we want to to change that or we just say when it's ready? Troy, you're closest to this subject. Um, so is the, which hat do you want me to put on? I'm gonna put on my Fedora Council hat, or sorry, CentOS Council hat. As a CentOS board meeting person, I don't know if we can actually answer that. Um, then if I put on my CentOS stream hat, I wanna say it's, going to be roughly around the time that Red Hat um, beta is going to be coming out roughly, if they want a rough thing, which is in the beginning of the fourth quarter, end of the third quarter, that, that time frame, when they usually do updates. Um, so. Okay, that's a fair answer. But, but as a, as a CentOS board, I don't know if we can say that. Um, that was my question. Like, uh, it's fine to leave it like it is today. I was just wondering if we want to to Wait. communicate on that. The voice of Red Hat has his hand up. Oh. Yeah, I want to make sure I understand the question. Um, was the question about publicizing CentOS Stream 10, or was the question about RHEL 10? More center stream, like uh, because okay, my, my answer is like you can have a look in Koji, you have some builds and it's ongoing, but uh, we don't have like I don't know, like uh, do, do, do we want to have a release date or something like that? This is the thing that um, does it make sense? It, like a call to action, please come use it kind of messaging. Yeah, kind of a blog post or something like that. I don't. Know. Yeah, I mean, I can I can take that question back. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, a long turnaround time. Okay, fair enough. Thanks. Um, Davida, then Sean. Uh, so for what is worth, uh, I think we could put out something even now that said like CentOS 10 is here, it's still being actively developed, um, but you can use it now if you want to. Uh, I know the Appel 10 bring up is going fairly well and there's gonna be usable artifacts coming. Well, there are technical usable artifacts on that now, but they're not publicized, but there will be more publicized ones soon. So um, we could do something if we wanted to. I don't think necessarily think we need to have a, like a big like flag release day for stream because uh, it is something that's going to continue being developed throughout. So I think just saying this is there, you can use it, have fun, uh, is probably good enough here. It is a good opportunity for us to do some PR around it, though, and we'll get a bunch of like press coverage and things. So we should make use of it. And I think I said Josh, then Sean. No, it was Sean first. OK, Sean, then Josh. Um, Alexandra Fedorova had suggested doing a center of stream 10 test day in the way that Fedora often does test days. I did talk to Sumantra about it at Flock because um, he runs the Fedora test days. So, um, and I would need to do follow up with him and Alexandra and other people to make it happen if people are interested in that happening. Okay. And that would be that would be something we would publicize, like, hey, come use this for testing, you know, try it out. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my newfound power in the role that I am now occupying and just say, Stream Ten is on the mirrors. People can download it. Uh, 
you all should feel very empowered to write blog posts about it as much as you want, as long as you don't tie it to RHEL directly. All right, Troy. Um, my my question is on on testing. What what sort of things did Alexander want to test? Um, one one of the one of the reasons that's going through my mind is because we have the the SIG that's doing the test is actually writing the tests for the composers um, that uh, we are very grateful for and uh, and. Right at the moment, we're not sure if the tests or the things failing or the composers failing. Um, but um, anyway, I, I'm curious if we did have a test day, what sort of things she was thinking of testing? I, that's a good question for Alexander. Um, I mean, she's involved in the that yeah, the, right? So um, she would certainly know what's yeah. already being tested. Um, so for what is worth, when I've been involved in past days in Fedora before, it's uh, you give you point users to a link to an ISO somewhere, they install it usually in a VM or in a machine there around, and then you either ask for feedback on specific tasks to complete, like go through the installation and give us feedback on is Anaconda seizing up here or there, or like go and try these five things and let us know how they work for you or use us task them to give general feedback. Um, the, the task stuff can be quite useful and it's quite useful like when it's useful like Fedora chain proposals, for example. Um, we did this when we were doing battery fest in Fedora, I remember, and that was really, really helpful. I don't know for like a general, hey, play around with this and tell us what you think that we will get a terribly useful signal, um, but it might be worth a try. We could get installation documentation. Yeah, that's another idea. We could do this as a tied to point us to stuff that isn't clear that we should at least get signal for writing docs. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Troy? Um, I'm putting on my alternative images hat. Um, I would love after we get KDE up and we get some live images for Tim to do something like this for for that for the KDE. Well, all the various images because the compose tests when when Central Stream Ten gets a compose, it runs through those tests. But my alternative images stuff, I'm not getting enough testing on, and we have had a couple bugs reported on it. Anyway. As that SIG chair, I would love for us to, to let our SIG be part of that testing, if we do it. Davida? I love the idea of extending this to SIGs. Like in hyperscale, one constant problem we have is, for example, that we try to have SLinux Linux enablement for systemd, but none of us actually use SLinux, Linux. So we're just always doing it blindly and then I never know if somebody's actually using it, and I find out when I test it once every few months. So it'd be lovely if somebody that actually uses this can give us feedback on like which whether it's working well and whether it matches expectations or if there are broken things that we should fix. Uh, so yeah, I I think it would be great to get this expanded to six that produce artifacts so that folks can test them. Hang on, I'm scrolling up the agenda because I have a question and I need to look at for the right wording. CentOS Showcase. Sean, could this be combined with the CentOS Showcase? Could it be kicked off at the CentOS Showcase? I think possibly kicked off, uh, generally advertised. If we, if we have it in place, um, like we have a date for it, like if the date for it was like say late November and we're doing the showcase in early November, uh, I think we could definitely probably even just have a talk be like um, Alexander give a quick talk about about the test day and what you know how people can be involved. So I don't, awesome. I don't know how well that would. Well, 
No, but, I, I kind of like the kickoff there. Yeah. And there might also be something we could add into Connect as well to say, hey, next month we're going to be holding a test day type of presentation just to let folks know how they can get involved. I like this idea. Yeah, um, and it's visibility regardless, so, which is nice. And, and Josh, you're right. I mean, Adam sent out that information to the lists a couple months ago that we were kind of on the mirrors. Thank you, Brendan. Oh, he's gone all right. Um, so yeah, I mean, folks should know it's there, but if they're not on the mailing list per se, they may not know it's there. So a blog post or two would probably be a good idea. And we can take that back to the promo sig slash doc sig because we're kind of combined and that's tomorrow's meeting. So all right, we have 10 minutes left. Does anyone else have any other business or anything they'd like to discuss? Sean, do you want to maybe say something about the timeline for the election? Um, the timeline for the election would be, uh, I believe the 30 day mark from when I sent it is September 23rd. Um, I am verifying with people uh, I, I do need to send some emails to verify with people, but there could be um, nominations that happen, right? You know what? Let me, let me, this is a recorded meeting. So let me see. It's 30 days. I sent the email on uh, the 30th. So therefore, um, one, two, three, four, that's 28. 29.30, it would be the, the I'm sorry, it's September 29th, I was wrong, September 29th, which is a Sunday. Um, so let's say September 30th is when I would close that um, for nominations. And then I need to, for each nominee, I need to verify that they are willing to serve. Uh, obviously, I will check with people before the deadline, but if it, something comes in right at the deadline, then, then um, and uh, we've agreed that I will, uh, have each of them submit a, a, a statement um, of, I'll, I'll have some guidance on word count basically, so it's not like a novel from one person. Um, and that's for I, the- I think we're probably looking at like um, around October, um, maybe even October 4th, but maybe the, the Monday after that, October 7th is when I would be Sending out, uh, just giving about a week for for people for the nominees to submit their um, their statements. But as soon as they submit their statements, I'll put up the the vote for it. And the statements are only for the folks who were not self nominated, because we should have good write ups, hopefully from the people who did self nominate. Okay, you know, so hope. But you know, but if we have not, if we have particular guidance on on the statement, they might want to okay. the write for that. So I'll give them. The Abra. No, I. I, I'm good. I was just going to say, I think it's useful to get everyone a chance to go over that, like, what they've wrote is going to be the statement shared and make sure they're comfortable with it. So everybody's on a level playing field. Okay. I just want to make sure that, because I, I didn't feel like the non self nominated last time necessarily had a chance to speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to make sure that everyone had a chance to first to speak for themselves. And I like the idea of let's make sure if we're saying 250 words, everybody is 250 words and so on, or at max. And if someone chooses to only put in two sentences, well, then that's then their choice. Um, all right. Does anyone else have anything else or do you want seven minutes of your day back? All right. Everyone's getting seven minutes of their day back. Thank you all for attending. And in being involved in the conversations. Take care all. Bye. See y'all.